Well, good morning, good morning. It's uh, actually it's good afternoon. How about that? I uh, slightly uh, different uh, podcast today because we've decided to close the surgery for two weeks uh, because of the uh, uh, the you know because of the COVID cases in Ken were going up a bit and we're waiting for the vaccine scheme to roll out. And uh, I can't do any um, video camera, uh, you know, road cam footage today because um, uh, I'm in the other car and it doesn't have a webcam. Sorry. But I think that I will carry on doing that because it seems to be like a good way of doing it. Now, I don't want to put the GPS on, so I'm going to have to try and remember how to get back to the motorway. So, so what am I talking about? You know, what the hell? Uh, well, basically, how do I get back to the motorway? I'll try and go this way. There's no road signs. Uh, I'm trying to get vaccinated, and uh, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit of a palaver. What happens is, I got an email last night, and that's uh, Sunday evening, from the local dental committee saying that uh, they've opened up vaccinations, uh, or rather directed me towards the East Kent Community Health website, where um, that's where you, and where you're booking if you're a dentist or a priority two uh, frontline healthcare worker, that's where you can book an appointment. So. Um, So um, we spent, uh, this, first of all, don't try and do this on your phone, okay? Don't just do it on a computer, on a PC or something, because uh, you'll, you'll slit your wrists if you try and uh, do this on, a, on, a, on your phone. So you create an account with the East Kent Community Health, and then uh, you have to, on a separate page, put in more details about um, who you are and of course being a private practice they've got no there's no uh, I mean the subcontractor is the sort of the closest that they've got they've got dental non EKCHT or whatever so we chose that and then um, it said put put down your uh, employer's uh, email and I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm self-employed. I don't have an employer. So then um, nothing, you know? So we're waiting to see this, this button that's supposed to let you book an appointment didn't, didn't show up. So then it was only this morning I realized that if you put down that you were employed and put in an email for your employer, then you've got this option to book a COVID test. So, and the COVID tests pop up um, like it's like whack-a-mole you'll get uh, you can press the button to book a test and then but most of the time it will say no tests available but then when you refresh the screen sometimes it says yes you can have a test and the test uh, not the test a, a vaccination and the vaccination where you can have this vaccination is like a uh, random you know and we've got two centers one is very near me in Aylsham and the other one is about an hour away in Sheppey and uh, this is why I'm now I'm on my way back from Sheppey so basically I could have one in uh, six weeks in just around the corner or uh, like at half an hour's notice in <laughs> Sheppey if I was prepared to jump straight in my car and drive drive for an hour. So I decided that because the surgery's shut and I'm not doing anything, uh, I'll jump in my car. Jumped in my car, got to uh, Sheppey Health Centre early, waited the mandatory, you know, until 10 minutes before the appointment, so a half an hour wait, and then... Uh, went to the front door only to be told that they got no vaccine hadn't arrived apparently 
So what he said was that if they go to uh, if I go to Aylsham, the one round the corner, between four and eight o'clock this evening, they've offered to stay open and vaccinate everybody who was due to be vaccinated at Sheppey today, but couldn't because there was no vaccine. So I don't know whether that's that sounds a bit nebulous to me, you know. That's a bit like bring this number, you'll, they'll sort you out, sort of thing. I can't, uh, I can't see this uh, working. I, you know, what's going to happen? Everybody from Sheppey's going to pitch up to Alsham at four o'clock, aren't they? And they're going to pitch up at four o'clock because if you pitch up at, if you say I'll wait for the rush to die down and go about seven, you're going to get the same. Um, message, you know, that the vaccines run out because you're not telling me they're going to have enough vaccine to vaccinate everybody from Aylsham and everybody from Sheppey and still have enough left overnight to vaccinate everybody from Aylsham tomorrow so it's just not going to happen so anyway, so the NHS has given me the right run around my hygienist has got an appointment for Thursday, but that's in Sheppey. So I shall have to say to her, look, uh, you know, you'll you'll have to bring them before you go to uh, check that they've got some vaccine. And they go through all this palaver of uh, validating your email address and validating your. Uh, phone number so they can send you a text and yet at the end of the day they don't uh, contact you to let you know that uh, there's no point you making the trip because um, they've got no vaccine I think they had vaccine I don't see why they are making appointments if they've got no vaccine I think they had vaccine when they made the appointment I think the vaccine's got uh, some, some care homes coming and Nick the vaccine. I don't, I don't think they would have been making appointments if they had no vaccine. And I made my appointment about 90 minutes, it's about 120 minutes before the appointment. I actually booked it. So obviously I thought it was a cancellation, uh, which it probably was. But I can't, I can't for the life of me see why they would be making appointments anyway if they didn't have any vaccine. So that's it. So that's the central planning for you. Inefficient, wasteful. And uh, expensive. Now you might say, Derek, you know, you're constantly knocking the health service, you're constantly knocking the health service. Where would you be without the health service? I mean, for example, even assuming that the vaccine was being distributed by a private company, the, that private company wouldn't have been able to have put the billions of pounds into um, developing the vaccine in the first place. To which my answer is they, they would. Yes, they would. That's precisely what they would have done. Any vaccine company that would, you know, that, that was going to be left with rights over its own intellectual property and its own vaccine would be pumping billions of pounds into uh, getting a vaccine and distributing it. And I, it's my honest belief that they could do it more cheaply than the NHS is doing it. For, for two reasons. First of all, the NHS is uh, inefficient, centralised, bureaucratic, etc., etc. And uh, secondly, the only way that the, the government can get money for the National Health Service is to take it off of people. The government doesn't produce any money; they just they just steal it. So basically, you know, to get eight pounds to put towards the billions that they're supposed to have spent, they'll have, they'll have nicked 20. 
So uh, there's no way I'm better ahead in this financially. No way. <laughs> so, but you know, I'm just, like everyone else, I'm stuck, you know? I'm, I'm just in this maternalist nanny state that is just tells me drive here, don't drive here, drive there, don't drive there, you know. So that's it. That's sort of three hours out of my day, really. Um, when I was um, sorting out patient queries and making appointments and things like that. And anyway. So basically, uh, getting, a, getting a vaccine is the right palaver. Not as bad as getting an NHS.net email address. Well, I've got to say, that was rather fortuitous. I was rather lucky in that uh, I managed to get an NHS.net email address uh, at a point when having one actually turned out to be quite useful because being able to say, yeah, my address is something at NHS.net was, um, you know, was accepted without any trouble. Not my normal email address, I'm sure. As a private dentist, I'm, I'm sure they don't expect me to have an NHS on there. I was just pleased that I had one, you know. Right, perhaps I'll do the second half of this tonight and let you know how I got on uh, at, uh, you know, ease four to eight o'clock at Aylsham Waffle. All right, talk to you soon. Bye. Well, good evening. How are you? You won't be able to see me because it's pitch black. Although it's only five o'clock. Good news, happy news. You won't be able to see this, so I'll show it to you. That's my, I've been vaccinated badge. Whee! So, talk about, Daisy pulls it off. So I drove back from Sheppey having been told that uh, possibly Aylsham would uh, see all the Sheppey patients between four o'clock and eight o'clock. And I thought, what's the chances of that? On a scale of naught to 10, where naught is unlikely and 10 is total bullshit, I'll put it about a nine. Anyway, uh, I turned up and it only, it only turns out it's true Mind you, in the meantime, I'd rung up the people who organised the, um, the East Kent community people and said to them, like, you know, what is this? Is this true that, you know, or is it going to be another wild goose chase going all the way down to Aylsham? And she says, I don't know. She says, you know more than I do. But I didn't cancel the appointment because I figure if I cancel the appointment, then they might turn around this evening and say, sorry, your appointment was cancelled. Anyway, they found me and uh, and uh, and I've been done. So I've, I've had the Pfizer vaccine. You get two choices of vaccine. You can either have the Pfizer vaccine or you can just not have a vaccine. If you want to wait for the Oxford one, then it's not generally available. I think it's going to be more more generally available shortly. But um, you know, that's the one. That's the one for you, uh, you uh, plebs in the uh, priority three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and all that. But me, uh, moi, being priority two, front line, don't you know? Um, they've, um, I've got the first come first serve sort of thing, which means that instead of uh, normally with a vaccine, what happens is they inject you with the antigen and that generates, forces your body to generate the antibodies, they've injected me with a messenger RNA, which basically just gives my body a message to produce the antibodies. So, uh, hence the, the higher rate, you know, the 90, uh, 90 plus rate, uh, conversion rate, you know, immunity rate that they claim, uh, as opposed to the 62%, I think, for the Oxford one. Mind you, you know, 60% is not bad for a vaccine. It's comparable with other vaccines, so. Oh, so what else can I tell you? It's not difficult, I mean, you know. 
I had to take my shirt off because I couldn't roll my shirt sleeve up because she said, she said, I have to plunge it. I have to plunge it deep into the deltoid, she says. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Get plunging. So, uh, and it, uh, you know, it's not painful or anything. It's, uh, and they're all very good. They're just, uh, you have to stay under observation for 15 minutes afterwards, but which isn't that long. No, I don't need stupid thing. I ran into some stupid girl who was in front of me in the queue who wouldn't, um, who wouldn't move, you know? She insisted on leaving 30 feet between herself and, the, and whoever was in front. I wonder if my lights are on. That's a bit more like it. Someone turned my lights off. So, uh, what else? Yeah. Anyway, it's a, it's a bit of a, obviously it's a production line, isn't it? So they get you in, you go to the receptionist, she clocks you in. You then go to the consent desks, where they give you this uh, four-page consent, which basically is all the just the sort of consent you get for a flu vaccine, you know. Might make you feel a bit feverish, a bit achy, blah, blah, blah. And, um... Then uh, you then queue up and go in, and they've got two people with a divider in the room. So they've got two nurses giving uh, jabs simultaneously in one uh, treatment room. Oh dear, I'm behind the slowest car. It's just turning left, thank goodness. Probably going to the. Um, Eyesight Testing Centre. So, what else? Oh, yeah, yeah, so it was easy. So, you're supposed to have the second jab after three weeks, but you're not. They said that they're going to give it to you after 12. So, there you go. But anyway, I've had one. That's the main thing. So, how do I feel about it? When, when you've had your jab, how do you feel? Okay, let me tell you. I'm pleased I've had it, obviously. I feel a bit more confident now. I'm a bit less worried about someone coughing on me and me dying on the spot, which is what the media sort of portray it as, you know. Especially if you're obese, which is the second biggest comorbidity behind being seriously ill and about to die anyway, or being in your 80s and being nearly dead. Then, then, and then that comes first, and then obesity comes second. So obviously, that's not great news for all of us who are obese. So I feel I feel more confident now that I'm sort of I've, I've almost I feel like I've dodged the bully, you know. There's a great um, reassurance that comes from vaccinations. I've never really been against vaccination. Uh, I know, in fact, I've never been against vaccination. I mean, when you um, have children or, or you know your grandchildren are going through vaccinations, you know, there's always that. Uh, that sort of nagging doubt, isn't there? Like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, but, you know, being a scientific rationalist and being brought up on the work of Harvey, the blood guy, and Jenna, you know, and the cowpox and all that, I think that's great. You know, I mean, I'm so proud of science for bringing this sort of general good to the world as opposed to religion, which seems to be doing nothing but causing, you know, like an anti... <laughs> an anti-science um, so yeah so um, you know I feel you know it's a science is a big one everything else zero then obviously I feel a bit guilty that I've had it I managed to sort of wangle it uh, my, my hygienist is having it on uh, in about three days time so she'll be you know and then she'll so it's a bit like a uh, one by one, you know, all the people you love as they get vaccinated, you feel like you're a bit safer and a bit safer. But I won't feel happy until everyone's been done. But, uh, you know, but the, the other people in the family are not working with aerosol, potentially infected aerosols. And, uh, and you know, I obviously am. So I, I don't, I can justify the fact that I've had it by, by being 
you know, by potentially being at higher risk. Um, and then Lou, my nurse, uh, she needs to get one because she's uh, more at risk because she's um, got a she's um, immunocompromised. So in a way, I almost would have been happier if it had been her today that had got it today. Um, and I won't be happy really until she's got one because I think she really does need to be vaccinated. So, um, so if I get one done. My hygienist, who's my wife, gets one done, and Lou gets one done, and then, and then I'll relax a bit, you know, and then let the Oxford vaccine wash over everyone else. So, as William said, all's well that ends well. So, uh, been been a bit of a stressful day, but you know, I've got the objective was achieved, and the NHS, you know, really sort of. They pull things off, don't they? You know, I do. I criticise them, and I still, I've still got criticisms of them. But you know, I can understand why the, the relief that floods over you. You know, when you find out that that one thing that that one bloke said about the uh, them being the available. You know, the injections being available from between four and eight. That it was true. It wasn't total BS. You know. Some, some, uh, to a certain extent, some organisation is going on somewhere. You know, even if it's not to the extent of uh, saving me the two-hour journey to Sheppey and back to, to, you know, to get he haw. But uh, anyway, I'll. Um, I'm not going to stretch this out. It's good news. I've been vaccinated, so. Uh, uh, if I need to go back and open surgery or something, you know, I'll be able to do it with a with a bit more confidence. Right. Nice talk to you. See you soon. <laughs> you can't see me. I can't see you. <laughs> Bye.